We're sailing. We're coasting into Coast. the 140s. What up, Jobins? Episode 141. Wow, it's been a busy day for Schmidt, Brennan. Fucking Peter. Ah, God love that little guy. Oh, no. What what happened with Peter? Well, Sono's been at Sean's past two nights, and then even when he has his girl over, Petrie's been sleeping with Big Schmidt more. Everything's been going great. Wake up at like 4.30 in the morning to him going, <coughs> fucker through. I'm like, Peter. And he threw up right in my bed. No. Had, and it woke me up. Had to get up, take the cover off. Oh, man. I was like, Petrie. But then, you know, you can't be mad at him. Cause this, you, know, you can't be mad. I'm like, are you okay? He's never done that to me, man. Yeah, he's never done that to me. I'm like, I'm like dude, could just got off the bed, man. But yeah, I had to deal with that, right? And then woke up early because Sugar Shane wanted to go do the stairs. The fucking stairway to heaven. And these stairs you're talking about, it's like a real hike up these mountains. Yeah, I've overcome my fear of it. The first time, it got me so bad because I got so stoned. Didn't know what I was getting myself into. I'm halfway up that fucking thing and I look back and I about shit my pants. I'm just afraid of heights. Dude, I hate heights too. I'm happy that I didn't go with you guys. I know, but you should go with us sometime because it's fun now. Now I enjoy it. And now I got my spots where I take my little little 10-second breather, get my wits about me, and continue on up. <laughs> Does Sean take any breaks? No, the motherfucker's running up it. But, yeah, Jobins completed the three-day fast. So, again, all you haters, you can sell me $1,000 in the link below. How many people were hating? That's crazy, dude. Yeah, I was getting, well, they, you know, it's not necessarily hate. It's probably motivation. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, Schmidt, no way you can fucking do this. Blah, 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 blah. But, dude, hey. It was impressive, though, bro. Like, I can't imagine going a day without eating, let alone you can do three it. days. You can do a day, definitely. You could, I, I bet you could do. Well, you're little and your fucking little metabolism. <laughs> It's still just like a lot of willpower, man. A lot of mental toughness to do that. How hungry yeah. were you? You were hungry quite a few times. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. I feel like it was a lot easier for me than it was uh, for Shane and his brother, Michael. Uh, you know, Sean's got no body fat. He's got nothing to lose. Same. Michael's recently been like that, too. That dude in a year lost all his body fat. Shout out to his brother doing that yeah. with you guys, too, man. He really pushed through as well. Yeah. Crazy. But, uh, yeah, every day... At one, like once a day, it hits you hard. Mine for me, my time was dinner time, is when I'm just like, the surprising thing. It happened at the end, right? I, you even said it. I thought I was gonna get hangry. I thought because Big Schmidt wasn't eating for three days and he knew Big Daddy wasn't gonna get any food, that I'd be fucking flipping out. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. Do you think that has a lot to do with uh, that you were prepared to Probably. not eat? To where, like, when you're hangry uh, every other time, it's because, like, there's reasons we're not eating. Yeah, you're like, really hungry, and then, like, you're like, oh, man, I could eat right now. And then you know, oh, it's going to be a few hours before you eat. So then you're like, motherfucker. But you know? when it's, like, it's a mission, yeah. and I'm not supposed to eat, it's a almost different. a little different. But that last hour, Jobin's, oh, man, I was ready to go. I got this huge amount of energy. I was, fu- what was, I was like, running around the kitchen. You know what I mean? You were Flying excited. knees. Yeah. Um, the whole thing, the third day. So it's pretty easy for Big Schmidt. I feel like I could do it every six months, twice a year. That's what they say to do. Uh, the benefits and everything, Jobin's, is apparently you're supposed to decrease everything by 70%. Fucking forgot to put the link in the last video. I'm going to remember to do it this time, Jobin's, <laughs> if you want to learn. But, uh, yeah. You just drink water. We did a bone broth fast, which I, some people were giving me shit because there's a lot of people that just do the water and some people can go months with, with just doing water fast, but it's like, fuck months? that. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently dude, it's just supposed to reset your whole digestive system. It's supposed to, cells are dying. New cells are fucking growing. You're going into fight mode. You're coming out of fight mode. This and that. It's supposed to be a lot of things. I felt good and I lost 10 pounds. Shout out. So the, and what was really nice was I thought, okay, I'm going to gain that shit back right away as soon as I eat. Um, you're supposed to, as soon as you uh, end your fast, you're supposed to do like a, like a, like a, uh, what's it called? Anti antibiotic uh, yogurt, like or what is it called? Oh, uh, uh, like a probiotic. Probiotic. Probiotic, probiotic yogurt. yogurt. I got yeah. you. I got you because yeah. of the gut health, huh? Little stone, Jobin. Sorry. Yeah, but a probiotic yogurt. You're supposed to get that on your belly first. Then you want to get like a protein shake or something, or like a light protein, like scrambled eggs or something, okay. just just to keep it light. I couldn't do that, Jobins. I was fucking hungry. I got a delicious salad, baked potato, 
in a big thing of salmon and I fucking scarfed that down. And I thought I was going to gain the weight in the morning. Sure enough, went to the bathroom in the morning, all kept off. So working out, then I worked out with David this past week, put up 205. Hell yeah. Nice, man. What did you start at? 205. That's well, a huge accomplishment. I don't know what to say. I don't know if I should say 125 or 135 because 135 was, I was having a hard time doing 135. That's how weak your boy was. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's really motivating. Again, shout out David. I'm going to shout out David every time I talk about it. Just because that guy knows what he's doing. He really fucking cares about the people that he works out with and teaches. He sees how much I care because that's just the one thing. Like, I'm blessed with this that Tim gave me, so I don't want to let anyone down, right? Right, right. So I believe that when you get something like this, you just show how committed you are. You keep showing up. He puts me through some hell, and I just listen and shut up. Sometimes he can see it in me. He can see a worn down Schmidt, and he'll go, you know what? We'll actually do this, and then we'll do that. I'm like, okay, all right. You saw it. That's so. awesome that he's able to work with you, and you guys are doing doing some good shit there. Right. Now I'm benching 205, Big Daddy Schmidt. My goal, lose 45 pounds and gain 45 pounds 50 pounds in strength i want to be able to put up my body weight that'll be sick you're gonna, you're gonna be a monster yeah. bro i can't wait boys can't wait jobins schmidt's motivated schmidt's on a mission and i can do it but that chicken broth didn't you say that it was awful god awful danny shout out danny uh she made sean a bone broth when you do it like that when you have a rest a really good authentic bone broth recipe that even makes it easier because then you got something to look forward to. You're like, oh, I got that. Deli-. Sean gave me like three tablespoons worth. So like two sips total, right? And I'm just oh, oh, just enjoying every bit. Mm-hmm. Oh. But then when you got the store-bought bone broth, fuck that shit. That shit's awful. Would it have been easier to do the store-bought if you hadn't tried Danny's prior? Probably. Probably. But I'm glad that it went that way. I didn't even. All I had was a few sips of that uh, Danny's bone broth. And then I said to hell with that other bone broth and i just stuck to water so yeah, yeah if you jobins are interested look it up do it correctly and let me know what you did if you did it if, if you did it already let me know in the comments and if you were inspired by sean and all of us it's really cool when you got a group that does it it makes it more fun it makes it feel like a brotherhood i don't know bonding experience that's totally dope and congratulations again on doing that man thanks man i appreciate it i think it went overall for me, Jobin's one out of ten out of difficulty, probably like a seven. It's all mental. And once you break that and you get drink your water, you're fine. It's not even that hard. Oh, yeah. I think you could do it. I don't think you should do it because you're already <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Yeah, true, you true. I need to. need to get on them protein shakes, I think. Mm-hmm. I think if you actually started like uh, doing like push-ups and sit-ups, maybe I'll do them with you so that you can motivate me to do them. You know, okay. but if we just okay. did them like twice a day, a good set, like a 20 minute workout and then on top of you doing your jits shit, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Right. And then if you were drinking some protein shakes, bro, I bet you'd get so fucking, you're already like a little shredded guy. You don't even have to work mm-hmm. out and you're just, you could see it all. So imagine if you put on some muscle weight, dude, you'd be a little jacked guy. Mm-hmm. Be fire. Inspiring, bro. Hey, th- let's we it. inspire each other. That's what we're all about here in the Jobinism. Maybe in uh, like 20 years, guys, we'll all just have a big chunk of land and wear some kind of robe. And Funny you say that about buying a chunk of land. I wanted to bring this up. You know, I'm kind of the, I feel like because I work in the banking and everything, I can be the economy guy. Oh, yeah, look at your hands. Patrick, Pat, David. You Seeping. Know, so right Blood. now, everybody, Texas, right? They gained a net population of 174,261 people. Them Californians. But 494,000 people left Texas between 21 and 22. Think about that. That's kind of what we're seeing in Arizona, I feel like, where you see these uh, more wealthy people leaving even crazier expensive areas to get into more affordable areas. And then so many like realtors and people are talking about moving to the Midwest where affordability is right there. And it's like, you know, that's where we came from. Gone. And it's it's scary because it's like. When is <coughs> when is everyone at the, in the Midwest gonna be like, yo, we gotta place. move out here now? To, w- w- what's the next affordable place? You know, that's the thing. It's just imagine like a blood spill, just <laughs> spreading out. You know what I mean? And it leaves everything dry. You know, mm-hmm. and then it, you start it up here, and then it just. <laughs> to me, it sounds like the middle class Texans are being replaced by wealthy Texans for middle class property. 
Well, yeah, bro. No one can, no one can afford houses anymore, dude. We're all gonna be renting in the future, Jobins. Maybe we can rent a fucking complex together. We'll be fucking doing some cool shit. We'll be happy. It's we'll see. And then on top of that, even crazier in the finance uh, news right now, cryptocurrency is gonna. It's gotta be getting regulated soon, dude. You you want to hear this? Binance mm-hmm. CEO. Chain Pain Zhao. I'm just going to call him C- uh, CZ. Everyone calls him CZ in the media. Ch- Zane, or, uh, Chain Pain Zhao, right? CZ. He's pleading guilty to willfully causing the global cryptocurrency exchange to fail to maintain an effective anti-money laundering program. Yeah, that's all new. That's all new uncharted territory. You see Ozark? Yeah. Ant- money laundering? We're talking... But just through... Through cryptocurrency crypto. and through yeah. this exchange... We're talking not just like one or two transactions, over a hundred thousand transactions. Oh yeah, like transfers of money, dirty money that. into clean money, and some of the terrorist uh, groups, as recognized by the United States government, that are included. Are you really that shocked, bro? After are, watching Ozark, are you really that shocked? It's just crazy because it's actually like real life right now. Hamas, Al Qaeda, oh, ISIS. God. Binance is set to pay four point three billion as part of a plea deal for for this like transgression. CZ's to pay hundred fifty million penalty to the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission and could possibly face some prison time. Who knows though? This is just again that's a movie. Crazy Wild West shit going on. Yep. Ozark level shit going on. I'm sure drug Anytime. cartels are included in there oh. too. You know, and some people got 000. shot. Some people got shot. Bro. Four point three billion is what they're yeah. paying for the plea deal. How much do you think they were transferring through here? Probably hundreds of billions. Who knows, dude? Who fucking knows? And here's the fun part: for who? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Is there some big names in there? Is there some fun shit going on? It's not fun, but dude, anytime something like this brand new starts, those people are gonna dip their toes in. What oh, can we happening. do to get by? To get through, to keep on chucking. Man, and it's just like to even go more politically crazy with it. Mm-hmm. If you're going down a rabbit hole, why is it now just being brought to light with all the political crazy shit going on right now on who we're even deeming as terrorist organizations? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hamas was the first one that they brought up in there. And to think, like, Dude, with Andrew Tate and Piers Morgan and all the craziness that people are like having a controversy of which side you're on. And now it seems like this crypto guy's on the wrong side. Is this the first time that we've had like debate of what if we're calling something a terrorist group or they, has it always been like that? I feel like that's probably always been something. That's did we argue contested. over ISIS being labeled a terrorist group or did we just slap it on right away? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like we slapped that one on right away. Because I do, but like, dude, I loved that Andrew Tate and uh, Pierce Morgan, right? Their little debate. Andrew Tate's energy. Wow. I love it. He does not allow people to talk over him. Mm-mm. And then the things that are out coming out of his mouth, what do you say to? You know, you got to give the good answer. Otherwise, you're getting hit with some more stuff coming pretty quick. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's definitely such a nuanced issue to really just say yes or no at something's right or wrong. Well, I think when you know, like, dude, Andrew Tate's Muslim and he's got to know some people. That dude's rich as fuck. He's got to know some people. And uh, to imagine being in those shoes, in that spot, where you do have to be careful what you say. Hopefully we're like that one day. <laughs> we are on a little scale. Like, if we find out something about Sean, we can't say anything. It's like that. You know what I mean? But just way higher. Just just on a lighter note, I would say that we endorse just everyone being safe and just breaking the cycle of violence that seems to just never end. I really so. agreed with Andrew T- Tate's point. It's like one it, that is how it is. One side is a freedom fighter, the other is a terrorist. It just depends on what side you are. Mm-hmm. And when and Andrew Tate, the the when you have so many people living in inhumane ways and they're pushed to the brink where we would all what would we all do? What would we think? What would we do? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you got Pierce Morgan, Pierce Bronson just shoving it down his throat about just like that April, the October 8th event. And I, I was with Andrew Tate on that. It's like, too, it's like, well, that didn't start there. That's not where everything started. Mm-hmm. It started in, in ways we don't, we don't even, our dumbasses don't even know. That's, again, so why, Joven's why I'm just lately, I've just been like, wow, 
We're, I'm so grateful. We're so lucky to be born in America, dude. And we have freedom of speech. Just the, just the rights that we have. Mm-hmm. Rights. Just rights in general that we're not going around every day thinking rights. We don't wake up in the morning and think our rights. Well, what When some people do, some people can't do the things that we can do. And, and it's on their mind all the time. And I'm just like, fuck, dude. The problems that you really think you have that we have in this moment, like taxes and all this kind of shit. When and then I get upset because I'm like, why the fuck is Mr. Beast getting shit done, but no one else is? Shout out Mr. Beast on those hundred plus wells in Africa. That dude, I want to do that. Like, why can't we do that? Why can't? Why are we held up on this stupid shit? And why can't we all come together and do the like? What really matters? I don't know. I hate it. Would a, on a positive note on the Damn Mr. It. Beast thing, because mm-hmm. that, that's almost a we type movement, because he has all the subscribers and followers that have backed him and kind of contribute to that uh, being able to pay for those wells, right? Mm-hmm. So, so maybe that's a coming together thing. So, thank you, Mr. Beast, for for being one example when we could use a lot more. Oh, dude. Well, even kind of this is weird how we can kind of bring in Napoleon because Joe, when we went and saw Napoleon. Brendan was super excited. I was pretty excited. Your excitement hyped me up more. I love Joaquin, right? And obviously, he's the best part of the movie. Dude, and Ridley Scott's a great director, too, in the past. He's had so many good movies. It's a love story. I wasn't expecting a love story. Mm. I did a little bit. Like, okay, there's going to be, he's going to have his love, his mistress, and all that kind of shit. But that was a, that was Ridley Scott's, like, this is Napoleon and a love story. There's all this chaos. There's all this con- his weird things that he does and the control and power, but underline it's a love story. Man, it's like, cause it's so personal when it's a love story and there's like those sides of them that like no one could really record in history. It's just, how do you take those liberties as Ridley Scott to like make that direction, you know, of like, Oh, he should do that weird like shit. All, and you know, like, mm-hmm. how do you, it, it's just, it was a good movie, but I was just like, man, how much do I believe Right. Of what happened. History is only written by the winners, too. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. It's just weird how one guy can have a strategy that's so well that no other places have thought of. And he's doing all this and getting control. And then he's just uh, weird times, man. Again, we're very lucky. Because you know what I'm thinking about? Jobins, the thing I think about is when they're having those battles where they're all lining up and just walking towards each other with cannons flying off and everyone just shoot the people that what are they called the first line of people that are walking with the infantry infantry the first infantry mm-hmm. dude thank god thank you jesus christ on a, that i am not that we don't have to deal with that you're the first line you're the first line of people mm-hmm. and you got to walk towards a line of people pointing guns at you and and, you think and they cannons. Had any say? You think they had, they any had say no, in say. It? no say? And you know why? You're the le- you're the bottom of the barrel. Go on. Mm-hmm. We're the important ones. Yeah, generals in the back Fuck. on the horse. Fuck. That's the shit that we. I, even walking out of the movie theater and I'm looking at the end of the theater and I'm looking about how far the distance is. I'm like, none of us have ever fathomed that kind of battle mm-hmm. and what that would mentally put you through. We have no fucking clue. Dude. And it's not even that long ago when it was crazy like that. What's that movie with Jude Law at, at the enemy gates or something mm-hmm. where he's a sniper? Mm-hmm. Dude. And they even show what happens when you turn around from getting fired upon and your commanding officer will shoot you for retreating. That's f- so fucked. That's the scariest thing. So that's why I'm like, dude, sometimes it's like, okay, maybe we just need to fall in order and do the, let the controlling happen. Because <laughs> it, It's violent. It's all, that movie was a little reminder of like, damn, life was violent back in the day. We're very lucky. It still is violent. I was going to say, it's probably arguable that it's even more violent today, bro. Where are we at, right? Could you uh, sit, you're sit at? Napoleon down, sit Napoleon down and then have him watch a display or like a presentation of all of our weapons being fired. And that guy will probably like shit his pants. Yeah. If he could see like the nuke. He'd be like, what the fuck? That was something cool that Ridley Scott just kind of barely touched upon with uh, Napoleon is he had that sense of like wonder. He wanted to find out, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what kind of drove him a little bit. Because that scene, there's a scene where he looks at and it it just baffles me, dude. Like just a couple hundred years ago, like 
how different Egypt looked with all the shit in the ruins and how much we really cleaned it up and made it, you know, where it's like, what were they thinking? And then to think that like, we can go and look at that mummy that he looked at. That's just something that freaks me out because that's like a time thing. Because there's a scene, Jobin's, where he's look they he's in Egypt and they show him this mummy and he just he looks at it and he's just like and he wants to hear it. And he's just kind of figuring it out. And it's like, dude. And now and then here we are watching a movie. Now who knows if that ever even happened in real life, you know? But he, my mind's like, here we are watching this movie of this guy hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. looking at this fucking mummy that we can look at today you know mm -hmm. and now they're both dead and gone and the whole father time and how fat and just like time it's the freaky like i get kind of freaked out dude you know what i would love to do too if we could just get like a, <laughs> a european jobin trip or something but to oh go to God. france bro and go to the catacombs and see all the dude you know how many be so bones down. are there i'd be so down it would be crazy i'd be so i love traveling that's one of my i say it all the time brother it's one of my dreams with you i would love to be able to travel and make content and go to france and to go to where he was napoleon's buried at it's this big circle thing dude and it's got all these fucking big statues like doing shit <laughs> surrounded and you look and you're like looking down at them mm -hmm. and you're high up you know and then he's in the center on this huge it looks massive it's probably a casket in the thing you know that's not the casket there's probably a fucking casket inside of it mm -hmm. but it's just this big massive thing i'm like damn is that importance or is it ego well dude you got to think about this from our perspective like imagine being french you know but i would like if it was for us It'd be like we're in Missouri, right? And we imagine the United States is like an empire and it gets all sucked down and then France is only like Missouri. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. It's like they had so much land conquered and then to think like the height of your empire has been reduced to this now. And we joke about how you guys surrendered in World War II and stuff when it's like, dude, France used to be a recognized Threat. empire. Threat. They were storming into Russia. Yeah, dude. And Russia was like, and then that's another thing about history, Jobins, is, is that like when people would burn cities down back in the day, and that shit's gone. Well, that was a new tactic at that time. Really? It's called scorched earth. Well, it's scorched not, earth, it's, motherfucker. It's not a new tactic because I guess you could even go back to Sun Tzu, right? Uh -huh. But but they were using it for like the first time against Napoleon. Art of war. Be yeah, be <laughs> because Napoleon. What he did was he was able to mobilize his army so quickly because he would live off the land and, like, take every village he conquered, all their resources, and just move on. But when they're burning everything, he can't take anything. His guys start starving to death. They start going and getting sick and things like that. The horses, it was a disaster for him. Like when, and, like, when Napoleon moved his army through the snow when they couldn't and exactly. people were all getting sick and shit. It's crazy how those little decisions... Disaster, disastrous impacts. Disastrous. And yeah. to think he was warned so many times. That you know there was those guys like, dude. That's what, what I'm we, saying. Like, what are we doing? Is is Napoleon? Is it all ego for Napoleon? It mm -hmm. Was so like when you look at his burial spot, is that is he important or is it ego? Because he's important, right? Because he's one of the best at the time. He was the great, great considered the greatest leader of all time. But yeah. I don't. But then the movies also made him kind of like a cuck. I don't know. <laughs> They definitely did. He kind of gave cuckish vibes. And well, like, you know, his love letters at one point, they got t stolen. I, and and, and like then sold, released, right? And, released and they sold to the them. public. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Imagine like being like, oh, when I find out who slept with you, I'm going to be so mad. That's another thing. That was another scene, Jobin's, is he's reading, Napoleon is reading the paper. And it's the newspaper back then. And it was drawings of the events. <laughs> So, like, here's Napoleon oh, reading what happened, and he's got this image of, and so now he's picturing what he thinks happened. Mm -hmm. Dude, I bet that shit back in the day was hard to fucking deal with. Can you imagine? That's could, where duels happen. You could get your gun out, you know. I know, but, and plus, he was so far away from her at times. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In Egypt? Yes. Yeah, dude. So you're just waiting on a letter that takes months to get. Holy fuck. That would that was probably fucking crazy. And then I loved how the guys were like, "Oh, she wrote me," like that was their flex, you know, like, "Oh yeah, she's texting me. Oh, she's in my DMs." You know what I mean? Oh, well, she writes me. 
because it took a lot of effort to get them letters out to people. Yeah. So if a bitch is sending you letters in 1828, that's your bitch. There was some good <laughs> scenes in the Joaquin Phoenix acting was really was good the too. best part. My ratings, Jobins for Napoleon, six point eight. Reasons, uh, the CGI wasn't the best, mm -hmm. right? Right. The love story was cool and all, and it was great, and I felt it, especially at the end and everything, especially with her, which, um, what's her name? Vanessa Kirby. Great. <laughs> you probably get the name. Dude, now. heart, oh my God, heartthrob, Jobins. If you've seen Napoleon, I fell in love, man. So when things happened, I felt his pain, you know what I mean? Because I fell in love. I'm like, damn, that chick's making all these people fall in love? She must have been bad. Like we That's were what thinking. I'm saying. Yeah, Didn't dude. Didn't she have the Russian guy there, too? She had what? everyone and got little 5'8 Napoleon freaking out in, in <laughs> Egypt. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So uh, Joaquin was the best part. He's always such a great actor, and I'm very thankful for his acting. He's 49, bro. We still got a lot of time with Joaquin, hopefully. Because yeah. I really do genuinely love. I fell in love with him in Signs. And then I... You loved him in Gladiator. Which That's I, still a great movie. It is. I, I kind of want to rewatch it. Shannon's never seen it. We should probably rewatch it. If you've never seen Gladiator, Jobins, do yourself a favor and watch it. That's a great. You know what? Technically, he's played two emperors in Ridley Scott's movies. Yep. Might as well just call him Emperor Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be down with that. Uh, you need to know your history for this movie, Jobins. This little fucker, I guarantee it, when they were just jumping everywhere... I bet your mind, you could go, oh, I know what happened here. Mm -hmm. I know what is going on. Yeah, there was a bit I knew. Yeah, so, and I'm sitting there going, oh, fuck, what, well, what happened here? What was this about? And then it's just going on with the story, so I'm going, fuck. So, my little, if you're not the biggest nerd on history, you might want to learn some shit before you go see it, and then you'll probably enjoy it a little more. Because I'm sitting there during the movie, look, reading shit, and I'm going, oh, and I was actually ahead of the movie at one point. And then I, the movie was going in the order of what I was reading. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I was like, oh, okay, so this should happen. And then sure enough, it did. I'm like, okay. Now I know why. <laughs> so a 6.8 you're giving it? Yeah, what'd you give it? I'd give it a 7.0. The one other thing I wanted to dock it for was like him, him inspiring his troops. I think we could have seen more of like, how, how's this commanding like officer get all his guys to always fight tooth and nail every time? You know? Yeah, there was just like one scene with that. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty cool. Good, good movie. Seven out of ten for sure. That was your most hyped movie, Joe, because that was the one he was the most excited for. I thought we saw a better movie last night, honestly. Good Burger 2? <laughs> yeah, I thought Good Burger 2 was better. I'm not going to lie. I went in going, because Brendan really wanted to watch it, guys. I went in going, God damn it, we're wasting our time. I don't want to watch this right now. And I came out loving it. I loved it. It was, a, it was pretty much kind of like the original, mm -hmm. but we needed that. It was fine. It maintained that stupid energy. Yeah, and Kel, star of the show. Yeah. Ed. Killed it. Yeah, well, yeah, Ed, yeah, but killed it. And the things that they, the writing was good with him. And I would love to have been there while they were filming. Because that one scene where uh, Keenan kind of breaks character a lot, yeah. a little bit, I guarantee that happened a lot, dude. I bet they were laughing their asses off. And it's like... Because it was a lot of SNL people. I'm like, man, SNL really fell off because this is like their highlight right now. Right. And you got to think, guys, you can't be relying on a Nickelodeon skit to be saving y'all. I would give, I would give Good Burger 2 a 7.0. I'd I, give it a, a 7.0. I'm going to give it a 7.1 just to, just to <laughs> stick with me saying that it's better than Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely give Good Burger 2 a 7.0. It was cool. It was cool seeing some people. Some stuff just you gotta let just go right over your head to enjoy it. But it's okay. Ed is the funniest though, or like we were saying, uh, Kel Mitchell yeah. plays him, dude. And then I, like his family and everything was hilarious. I'm down for a good burger three now. You know what I mean? Let's make it happen. <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty fun, dude. We got some good fights coming up this weekend. Actually, Ooh. I just wrote down the main card. If you just want to go through, uh, go through it real quick. Let's go. So the. F First, guys, I'm not actually too familiar. Are you? Puna Healy, Seren Serrano, he's 9-3. and three. Do you know who that is? So, no. Versus Dustin St Stoltzfus. What weight class? I didn't write down. God damn, Jobins, I'm slacked on this one. I'm going to go Dustin Stoltzfus. I slacked on this one. I'm, unfam I'm unfamiliar with these guys. Same, same. I'm going to go Puna Healy. He's got a better record. Okay. That's math. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Damn. Okay, here we go. Sean Brady versus Kelvin Gaslam. I actually oh. really like this fight. 
This one's exciting. Sean Brady's 15-1 right now. Kelvin Gaslam's 18-8. and eight. When was the last time Kelvin, Kel, Kelvin fought? It's been a while, right? He fought, man, who did They're he? They're both coming off a win, correct? I think so. Or are they both coming off a loss? I think they might be both coming off that loss. That might have been his first loss Sean Brady had. Was it? Who, who, let us know in the comments, Joe. But you let us know. We're supposed to let you know. You let us know. Kelvin Gaston. That's how this win. is going. Kelvin Gaston's going to You win. think so? Just by, like, what, being a little more technical? Being the guy. Smarter? He's a great guy to test if you really got what it takes. And I think that Sean, Against- Sean Brady is going to be tested. And, like, just because of uh, Kelvin's resume and, like, his vet status, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's going to win. I, I agree with you. But I'm opposite with it. I think Sean Brady's going to get the nod by decision. I think we'll see a good scrap. And you're right. Kelvin Gashlin pushes people, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think Sean Brady will be – I think he's a little more hungry. I I'd feel like, like to see it. Yeah, I think he's a little more hungry. I'm going Sean Brady. I'm going to go by decision. What do you What do you got Kelvin by? Kelvin, Kelvin's going to win by decision. By decision. Uh, Rob, this one's fun, dude. Rob Font versus uh, Figueredo, who's coming up the weight class, mm-hmm. and they're throwing him right at Rob Font. But you have to, right? Because if he's – Rob Font's one of the best in the weight class, really mm-hmm. good. And he and Davison was what? He, he wasn't the champ anymore, so he's probably ranked what? Two or three in the weight class? Yeah. So you got you to gotta feed him to the Wolves. I think Figueredo winning would be crazy. It'd be nuts, right? What do you think he does? Get him up – would he be able to get – is he stronger than Font? Does he get him up against the cage? I don't see him – do you see him taking down Rob Font? Rob Font's long, lengthy – Good man. striking. I'm gonna go, man. I'm gonna go. Rob Font winning though. I don't see any way that Figueroa wins. What if What if Figueroa gets in, dude, and it becomes a crazy little nasty boxing match, and Figgy's just landing the better shots? That'd be nuts. Man, how It'd strong be tough, is though? Right? I gotta see Figgy's strength compared to. And I want to see the stare down. I need to see the weigh-ins and stare down to see the height difference. Man. I'm going to go Rob Font, too, just because he's one of the, the best in the division. He's been in there a long time. This is new. I think f- Rob finishes them in the second round. Think so? Mm-hmm. I think that's a decision one, too, again. I'm going to go decision. Okay. Uh, dude, Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green. Bobby Green's been on one lately, Joe, and he's fighting everybody. So it's like it's exciting. And he's been around forever. He's going to get... Well, dude, he was Jalen preparing. Green, or Turner. Jalen Turner, I meant, he was he took some shots, too. He showed some holes. Yeah. Again, the size difference. This is another one, Jovens, where I want to see the stare down. Because I feel like Jalen Turner should tower over Bobby Green, right? And just be so yeah, much lengthier. I think he would so be. I, but Bobby Green's the kind of guy that's going to bite down and march forward, you know? Bobby Green gets knocked out. He might get submitted. And Jalen Turner had a good fight against... Uh, D- D- uh, Dan the Hangman. Yeah. Well, Dan uh, Hooker was originally supposed to fight Bobby Green, but then he's out, and then Jalen Turner was a re- replacement. I think, what, two weeks, guys? I think so. Man. Real quick, he... not that long ago, maybe a week. That was a great fight. I think Jalen Turner is going to knock out Bobby Green. Thanks, dude. Killer be killed for Bobby Green? Yeah. God, if he beats Jalen Turner, that's a big win for Bobby Green, That's a guys. huge win for that's him. That's a big win. That's right. That puts him right up there, I feel like, with – Maybe one of the top five. He does that. Hold too. on, is Jalen top top five? I mean, if you beat my bad, Jalen. He maybe. beat Dan Hooker pretty good. Uh, well, it was close. That was a close ass fight. I don't even know, man. Right. Th- that that one's like, oh man, I'm, I could watch those two fight again after that. Last that could one. be a re- Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green could be a potential fight of the night. It's tough though because the main event, main event, you got Kelvin Gaslam on there. It's a good night of fights. Main event: Benil Dariush versus Armin. Uh, how do you say this guy's name? Sarzukian. Sarzukian. Which is tough, dude. Why tough. are they doing this to Benil, man? He they probably just threw does him it. into the hardest fight last time. I feel like that's Benil. Benil's like, give it to me. I, Charles I'll Oliveira prove it. beat him last, right? Yeah, I feel, dude. I feel like Benil's the kind of guy. He's like, I'm gonna prove it. Dude, Tharzukian's no joke, though. He isn't, dude. I think that's gonna be a really fun fight. Who do you got? I'm gonna go Benil Darius. You're going Benil. <laughs> oh, he's so durable, dude. He's so good. Things happen. You know, anything can happen in a fight. But Benil's no joke. He's one of the top tier classes. Great striker. Just good. He's a calculated fighter, and he's so good. Good cardio. Dude, Benil just got beat by the guy that would be champ if Islam wasn't there. You I know? know. Hey, name of the game, dude. I'd like to. I would see Charles and Benil fight again, hundred percent. Right. Who knows how it would go? Right. I'm gonna go Armin. I'm sorry, Benil. 
I like Benil. I like both these guys. This is a tough one. I feel like there's going to, I wonder if there's hater, if there's going to be a mutual respect between these two. Fight week starts tomorrow, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. For once, I'm actually pretty excited for a card. Those are going to be sick, sick fights. Dude. What do you got for me? You go for a little bit. Our Friendsgiving. Because we did have a little bit of a Friendsgiving. You know, it didn't go exactly as we had thought it would go going over to Tim's. But, you know, rest or hope that he just <laughs> rest you, easy. Rest in peace, Tim. <laughs> rest in <laughs> peace, Tim. <laughs> for real, though. Yeah, dude, it sucked. Mm -hmm. But Joe Benz, Tim's been fucking handling that shit like pro. This is apparently one of the most painful in in injuries you can have. Yeah, and he's wa he's dealing with some pain right now after the surgery because he's healing. Mm -hmm. So it was totally understandable yeah. to to call it off. But we had our what own little thing that we set up. You yeah. made some bomb ass burgers. Thank you. Uh, and then we had some of that fried eggplant too. Shout, Shout out, out Ara for yeah, getting dude. us the ingredients. Yeah. And then I made some of that fried lumpia, which is like a Filipino egg roll. I was so happy the boys all enjoyed it. Yeah. And then you helped me out too, being like, "Hey, maybe cook this one a little longer." So we we getting things working. Well, what was really fun about that was trying to cook things we haven't cooked before. So that was cool. Only time I had eggplant, my dad took care of it, so I never knew. I you had to. I didn't know you had to peel eggplant, mm -hmm. and that shit turns quick. It's like a banana. Man, I was I was I liked it a lot though, man. And with the uh, with the marinara, when you dip it in and it's right hot. You dip it in some egg. We I did an Italian seasoning with some. I added some other extra shit in there. And fucking blah blah blah. Dip it in the oil. It was really good. Eggplant's fire, Jobins. And your what are they called again? Uh, lumpia egg rolls. There's an egg in there. There's a pound of pork with because it's for a serving of 50 rolls. And then spring roll paper, water, chestnuts, sugar, black uh, ground pepper, carrots, sweet onion, green onion, uh, soy so sauce. So a few ingredients to to get it going. And it was really good. Yeah, I highly enjoyed you. those. But you you did a good job. Mm -hmm. But you're right. It was it wasn't Thanksgiving we thought we were gonna have. Uh, but I am super grateful for how how it turned out. A couple friends came over, barbecued. Sean came over for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. A very weird uh, part of me just wanted to get the ho I want to get the holidays over with, man. I want to get them over with. It's hard to think about. It's hard to deal with. But then again, I'm like, okay, I, you could be that way or you could not be that way. And I want to not be that way because I am still grateful for everyone I still have. You know, it's just that tough first. When you go through the firsts of like, man, and it's just still really weird. This is like the, f I've lost a lot of people in my life, but like my dad, like it's just weird with your dad, you know, and it's still a lot of getting used to. And it's weird with the person that's always there, not there anymore. So that's why I'm just kind of like, man, let's get these fucking holidays over with. But then I'm also, the other half of me is like, let's keep grinding. Be grateful for what you got. We're all good. He wants you to keep living. You're good, baby. Mm -hmm. So it's just a tough balance. No, man. It doesn't, I, so, yeah. You're obviously going to think about that kind of stuff. I'm thankful for you very much. Hey, thankful to uh, you. You helped me big time with this move out here, which is going to be two years in January, Jobins. Mm. And it's crazy that that is already happening. <laughs> two years has flown by. And then it also feels like we've been out here forever. You know, and that's just how life's been and it's always going to be. But we never know where we're going to end up, right? So that's why I'm just also grateful and thankful for the time now, mm -hmm. because I never know. You never know what's gonna happen, where you're gonna end up, yeah. and right now in life is really cool. It, it, yeah, it's sad with my dad being gone, but I also have a lot of cool things. Being with you, doing this pod, all you Jobins watching and supporting. Shout out Jobins. We started merch this year. We're trying to get that going more. Uh, being around Tim, Tim and Mariah blessed me with an awesome job. I'm trying every day not to fucking let them down. Uh, Sean's blessed us with this fucking lifestyle that I'm forever grateful for. Um, it's awesome to be thankful for all the, you know, opportunities that have come our way. And if there's one thing I want to say, Jopins, it's that when a opportunity does come across you, like make sure to take full advantage of it. Yeah. You never know where it'll take you. Even when you're scared and nervous, I know it's tough and coming from me, I know it's hard to even take in, but just do it just cause we only live once. And I'd rather at the end of the day before I die, knowing I tried, mm -hmm. I tried, than not. That would eat me. That would eat me alive. But, yeah, we got a lot of cool things going on. Uh, the coffee shop is endless, the possibilities. Dude, you made coffee for some people, too. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. 
And uh, December 16th, we're all going to fucking Vegas. That's going to be fire. We're going to be, it's our last full sin. Sean's in fight camp. We did this fast together, and now he wants to do something else for fight camp, which I'm totally down for. Mm-hmm. He wants to, he wants to, he's thinking of something. He's going to set it up just to kind of be there for him, you know? Because I like that shit. Play some chess with him, sharpen his mind. Yeah. Well, you know, it's going to be like a diet, try to lose weight, try to do something every day. Because we're trying, you know, he's leveling up too. He's gonna, this is uh, title defense numero uno. 96 hour fast next. Yeah, oh God. The three was per- <laughs> Three was good enough. Three, three was perfect. <laughs> but yeah, we just got a lot of good things. I'm just right now. Jobins in my life. He, if you, maybe take this, Jobins. If you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you don't know where you're going. You kind of worry about it, like Schmitters does. Because I worry about it. I'm like, fuck, man. I don't know what my future's gonna be. Sometimes you just gotta let go, right? Mm-hmm. Let the universe take you. Focus on what you can focus on, and nothing else. What are you laughing at? I was like, was that the advice that you would also give to uh, Oscar Pistroyes, the former Paralympic champion who has been freed on parole 11 years after murdering his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp? This is that Oscar Pistroyes guy that had the I legs. I think I remember He that. had the legs and he could run uh, yeah. really fast and he was and he like a gold Oli- medalist. Yeah. He was a champion. Yeah. Super inspiring story. Next thing happens... Did he stab or shoot her? I forget. He shot her multiple times through a bathroom door on Valentine's Day 2013, uh, claiming that he mistook her for a burglar. Oh, He was sentenced in 2016 to serve 13 years in prison. It's He's been... now 37 and set to be released. What year? 2001? 16. So he didn't even serve his full sentence. That's seven years. Mm-hmm. He killed someone. And she's gone. She's dead forever. See, that's the shit that scares me. Because it's like, okay, that dude's lying. That's a liar. On Valentine's Day, On val- too? Through a door. And you're just going to... The bathroom sh- door. Like, and you're going to shoot. You're going to go... Multiple times to make sure she's dead. And she's and she's going, no, I'm not a burglar. Well, I mean, I don't know how much she said. Oh, my God. Yeah, that one scares me, dude. Our fucking system's fucked. You were saying just like, oh, if you don't know what to do or where to go. And it's uh-huh. like, you know, he's coming out of prison like, holy shit. What do I'm I free. Do? <laughs> don't be around that guy. Just mm-hmm. don't be around that guy. And maybe, I don't know. Do you think he's innocent? I don't think so. Yeah. And now he's back out. Why did he get back out so early? It's just because of That life? was just a crazy sentencing in the first place. Shouldn't it have been life? I guess you would think. considering the circumstances and what he said. God, don't ever fucking... God, someone can just shoot you through a door now and you just... You want to hear another scary one? Because I was just going through like Google News. Derek Chauvin, who was the one that was... He was the guy that had the knee on George Floyd. Oh. He was, yeah, the cop that was convicted of uh, murder. Yeah. He was convicted of murder for that and sentenced... Guess where he was serving his time at? Tucson, Arizona, bro. Super close. And he's he's now in stable condition, but he was stabbed in prison. Oh. By a for, by a, a, another inmate. Damn. Think about how scary of a life that is. Fuck yeah. Well, he, he's dude, a cop. Was... He's a former cop known for killing a black man. We're getting and into now, shit that people are going to fucking turn off now. That's crazy. Yeah. The opinions that are going to get people riled up. Oh, no. Up. There's no. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying anything on that. I'm just saying like, man, that dude better watch his back. That'd be tough. Again, it's, dude, again, oh, my God. Like, I'm not, I don't, that, when you got your knee on someone's neck and they can't breathe and then they're going unconscious, no, you, would, right. you would think as a human you would stop. Mm-hmm. Because I get, like, I don't get, I'm not saying I get police brutality at all, Jovens, not at all. But when you're, again, we don't, I don't know what it's like to be a don't cop. Don't know, don't know. And yeah. I don't know what it's like to be a cop in a crazy area where you're dealing with gang violence, drugs, and just people acting crazy all the time. So that's just, that's that. That's for me. Dude, the fact he's been alive this long, though. I know. That'd be really tough. Now, if you genuinely, if you know, if I don't feel bad if the guy intentionally did it and he's like, oh, fuck this guy. I'm killing this guy. I don't go, oh, die, motherfucker. It's like, dude, you got what's coming for you. I'd feel really bad because we've all seen the video. We've seen the video and it's not the case. But if the guy accidentally killed someone and you're living like that, Mm -hmm. you genuinely accidentally killed somebody and you already felt horrible about it. Now you got... You're looking around like people are going to kill you any second. Mm-hmm. That'd be terrifying. 
But I'd imagine if you're someone who's crazy enough to kill another person and not feel bad about it, you're probably like, bring it on, motherfucker. Like, you're probably just some crazy person. Yeah, the world's crazy. Yeah, I didn't dude. mean to get super political on yeah, that Yeah, dude, one. people are like, But it click. was just a crazy news story. Like, holy shit, the guy just got stabbed. That was... One more story I had was that companion robot robots in China. Uh-huh. Uh, it's kind of freaky because over 92 million adults apparently live alone in China, and more than 6% yep. of the population is accounted for there. And Li Boyang, the CEO of X Robots, he's uh, aiming to make uh, humanoid robots shortly here with like silicone material and yeah. shit like that. Well, you remember your movie with Ryan Gosling you love so much? He was lonely. What's that? It was a number. It was a, it was a sequel to like a Harrison Ford movie a long time ago. Oh, oh, the Ryan Gosling. Uh, Blade Runner 2047. 2047, right? 2047 which... Ain't that far away anymore. <laughs> and uh, it's really starting to look like it's going to be like that. And it's going to be that and your little Ready Player One movie. Congratulations, Brendan. You, you did The it. Ready Player One is scary with all that. Uh, it, no. The meta games and stuff. It's happening. Like how you're, dude, when more violence is going to happen. You're worried about because that one bank got robbed and then they're not even telling you what happened or where it happened and mm-hmm. who's next. Yeah, well, when fucking people can't afford shit and things just get worse, crime rate goes up. And that's yeah, what's scary. That's true. That's what's fucking scary. We just went dark, Jobins. We're back in the light. Let's get a little fun here. PFL purchases Bellator. Did Jake Paul bring the end to Bellator? Well, I mean, they're, they both those guys combined, those those teams combined, aren't going to rival UFC, right? Well, it's real interesting just because there was all that talk about how like much money they put in for the boxing, how much they're getting, they're losing money, all this and that, and then something like this happens. It's just real interesting. And then, yeah, like the one guy, I think this is funny, uh, the PFL president, Don Davis, vows league will be MMA co-leader. And Dana White's freaking out. He thinks that Dana White's panicking about it. But I'm like, if you're if you're first off, if you're coming into the game saying that you're going to be the second best, isn't that like already failed? Don't you want to be better? I'm trying to come after UFC's throat. And Look how much better we are. On top of that, he's probably less restricted than I would imagine Dana is with like the WWE and everything because that merger put him as like the president and CEO of like what UFC. Yeah. But UFC itself is now owned under that bigger conglomerate. So it's like. Have fun, Dana. Right? PFL. So they're banking on Jake Paul, right? And then people who, whoever other celebrity that they can get into this kind of stuff. Why isn't uh, Nate Diaz? Apparently he didn't want to do it. Jake Paul was saying that it, they, it was under Nate's shit that they didn't want to do it. That it was all like, I think I remember seeing Nate saying it was all like, I'm not going to be in that rookie ass shit. You know Nate. Mm-hmm. If it's not his way, he don't want a part of it. True. But I just think it's pretty interesting. And then Derek, they had the the fights last night. Derek Brunson called out Jake Paul after he won. So it'd be kind of cool to see. I don't know. Derek Brunson's pretty tough. I, I, MMA, dude, he'd probably wreck Jake Paul, right? I would imagine. Jake Paul's going to be coming in. MMA. Apparently, the MMA's next move. If he doesn't get exposed like super quickly, I will be really impressed. I think he's got, what, a boxing event on, what, December 16th or, so, or something like that? December something, right? I think. Who's he even boxing? I for, it's a boxer. It's like a, I forget his name. He's just trying to work the ranks up in boxing. Oh, that's. But right. now then, when you see this, is he going to be doing both? Like how Logan's doing both with like boxing and WWE? Is Jake Paul going to be doing boxing and MMA? Dude, those guys' lives are movies. That's it's so crazy. crazy. It's fucking inspiring too. At the same time, that's why when we met uh, Loaf, dude, he's inspiring. We we got to meet Loaf yesterday, Jobins. Uh, he's got a fun. We we've been watching him for years. I feel like not as much now as we used to. Mm-hmm. Just in general, we haven't been watching YouTube like we used to. Just like going up to people and doing what he does, like, and they went to that. Takes balls to go to like a Trump rally and Biden merch. Man, that's pretty ballsy. Oh yeah, dude, I'd be afraid of getting shot or stabbed. Like that's a chance, you know. I would love he. I feel like he kept his voice the same all the time. You know, just talks like never breaks tone like that all the time. He's like a yeah. cool, he cool a cool customer like that. 
I would oh. like to see him under pressure really bad and see if he still sounds uh, talks like that. That's what's really cool, Jovens, about meeting all these other people who are famous and YouTube and doing the shit that I love and I want to do. You learn from them and you get to see if it's fake or not. And that dude was genuine as hell. And how he is in his videos is exactly how he is in person. Mm -hmm. Just super chill, super nice, shaking everyone, like politely shaking everyone's hand. I love that shit. He was a super polite guy. His whole squad was really nice. Guys. Super nice. Shout out to the whole squad. Uh, and then they're living out of their cars, Jobins. They're doing all this content creating and moving around the country in their cars. That's the shit I love. I, dude, that'd be fire. Mm -hmm. Be so fire. Just traveling, doing content. Oh, God. Life would be fucking awesome. That is Life is awesome. But it'd be cool doing that shit. Another too. ballsy thing. How many people can do that? You know, like, if you can't put, like, pat on the back for Loaf and his crew. Mm -hmm. Dude, to be on your own in your own car and having to drive across country. And With a bunch to, of people, Trying boys. to make content. That's crazy. But they seem to have a really good system, and he's been working with th that set of guys for three months, and they were rotating on driving. They had just done a 41-hour drive, so it was pretty cool. And he can crack. He was listening to Sean pretty well with the pads hitting. It was pretty cool. Yeah, he was saying he had, like, Muay Thai experience. One of his boys had, like, jiu-jitsu experience. Yeah, you, it was funny because he was getting his ass whooped by Sean and Chess, and Brennan's coaching him. And what would you say that made him? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I think I even wrote it down here. Let me put it. Oh, yeah. Here it is. I said, avoid reacting by forcing your opponent to react first. And he goes, damn, that's some wise shit. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You guys bonded. Well, I, well, maybe. I'd watch some right. Loaf and Brendan content for sure. That'd be fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, apparently they're going to be out in Vegas December 16th too, so that'll be crazy. But yeah, if you guys don't know who Loaf is, go sh go look up his content on YouTube. Young kid, really inspiring story. Uh, pretty funny. Like in that one clip when he, the guy came back, he's like, oh, he spawned back in. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Like, damn, just those little quirks and little sayings that he does sometimes are pretty damn funny. He's a young guy too. Yeah, 23. Tw yeah. yeah, dude, doing that shit, that's inspiring. That's the shit I like. What else you got? Ooh, the last thing was uh, I had Burt Kreischer's movie on here too, The Machine. The Machine. We watched it on Netflix where Mark Hamill plays his dad. And Jimmy Tatro, who used to be a YouTuber I used to watch a lot with Brock in high school, mm -hmm. he plays young Burt. I don't know why the intro hit, stabbed me right in the gut. Almost brought me to tears, just the intro to the movie, and then the movie was shit. Well, the whole movie was de like about him and his father's relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Which so I it, get. it had a lot of heartfelt moments and stuff. But that's it. It was like, okay, cool. That's for Bert to watch. But I bet Bert loves watching that movie. Mm -hmm. You know, what about us? True. It it, may, it wasn't always the most relatable film. Yeah, and it was the acting. I can't do shit acting. Bert, you're trying. You were doing great. It's just everyone else. He had moments, but he he had moments when he sucked too. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Bert. I'm very sorry. You tried, and it's awesome that they got. It's awesome that they got to do it. I would love to. Hey, to have a movie would be amazing. And even if people had, like us uh, sitting there shitting on it, who cares? The events were stupid that took place. Like how, how? Oh, that would happen, and this would happen. Right. Like Austin Powers is a good slapstick comedy. Like learn something, Bert. Yeah, that would have been fun. If funny. you're trying to do shit like that. And that. Yeah, that was another thing. It was like based on this joke that's just supposed to be a true story, and then it's like, damn, did that really all happen? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or like Pineapple Express did a really good job at having over the top, like even crazy action happening in it. But With the funny being fight so scenes. stupid, ridiculous. Right? And Literally then we're laughing. Like, we're laughing while fighting scenes are happening. Mm -hmm. That's the shit I love too. So. Oh, oh, man. I don't know what that is. What would you, what would you rate it out of 10? Because it's going to get a low score for me. <sighs> Probably like a 4.2. Damn, man. You went lower than I was. I was going to say a 5.6. Yeah, five point six here. I think it would have gotten the six if the action and the sequences could have just been a, even a, just a little bit more, not so crazy and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Again, I'm happy for Bert that the movie got made. Mm -hmm. It'd be so sick. Movie about yourself. What would you want to tell him? Called. What would I want it to be called? Yeah. Uh, fucking legendary Jobin. <laughs> the Irish tank. The Irish tank, yeah, yeah, about me getting rated R, wasted, <laughs> yeah. The stories of the man, this man's dance moves in the clubs back in the day was a legend. You know what Myth. the end of the movie would be? The end of the movie would just be a blackout scene. That's what happens when you get too crazy wasted. 
My movie would be called Stoicism. Rated R. <laughs> All right, Jobins. We're getting into the holidays, right? Mm-hmm. And like I was kind of talking about earlier, but me just wanting to get over it, right? A lot of people get down in the holidays. That but true. there's a reason to be up, Jobins. There's always a reason to be up. So we're here to try and help you get through the holiday blues. Because guess what? Life's worth living. And you never know where you're going to be a year from now. So much shit can change. A shit can change from the end of the month. From going, oh, damn, it's already the end of 2023, which is crazy. But life could be different by the new year. It's all that mindset, baby. So, Brendan, you're a lot better at me in this. Because I'm not going to, you know me, Jobins. Schmitty uh, deals with mental health a little bit differently than Brendan. A little bit differently than Sean. A little bit differently than Tim. You know what I mean? Right. I struggle. I'm open book. Schmitty deals with depression. Schmitty deals with anxiety. But I work on these things. I am. I can see it. And I think that's one of the first most important things Mm -hmm. is when you see these moments, take it in, reflect, and try to learn on how to not get in that position, how to not be in that mood, what to do to get out of it, what to do to relieve it. You know what I mean? So I got some questions for you that maybe you could tell the Jobins because you're good at this shit. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm all ears. What does mental health mean to you? Yeah, I'm starting. These are simple. We're starting out. What does mental health mean to you, Brennan? Mental health to me would be um, that like you were in a, a good state, a good state with your mind, you know, and like that your, your emotions are in check and there's a, there's a good balance there. Right. That's what uh, uh, mental health would be. Right. And I think when you have mental health to me is when you have good mental health, everything else is easier. Mental health can be a huge blockage that causes distractions in your everyday routines, goals, and like, I don't know. And I would also say that good mental health doesn't mean that you're never sad. Right. That would be bad. That would be bad. It'd be to experience all the, uh, the whole range of emotions on a balance to a balanced, you know, degree. hundred percent. I can't, you nailed that right there, brother. I can't stand when people act like that. Everything's fine. And it's like, oh, you can't hurt. You can't. Be mad. When they're right, you can't, don't let your emotions control your actions, mm-hmm. which is, it, that's the balance, right? That's where we try to learn. But don't shut off those emotions. Don't shut off. Mm-hmm. And don't think that others shouldn't be affected by your emotion or actions. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because your actions and emotions affect everybody that cares about you. And I've learned that the hard way. I've learned that with my own, like, I know one thing that got me out of the rut, Jobins, was when I really started seeing how affected everyone was getting by my depression. Like, oh, man, people I love are really starting to get worried about me, mm-hmm. and it's hurting them, and they're not, and it's interrupting their things. That's when I was like, oh, man, I don't want that. I don't want to cause that. Mm-hmm. I don't want my pain to affect others. So, yeah, we went down a little bit more. Here's another one. What was your perspective on mental health growing up versus now? Damn. See, see, this is where we probably would be understanding each other a lot more is like, dude, you don't want to cry and be a bitch, you know, like growing Mm up. Like, I don't know. It's, uh, it's like, oh, saying I love you, that should be reserved for just really, really important moments. And now it's like, I'm trying to say like uh or like if i call my dad you know it's i, I want to make a point to say like oh i love you dad at the end even if maybe he would be like oh yeah and then you know but just to like make sure that you get those things out there for sure because growing up you know there was no time like it, it, you'd be there was shame if you were a pussy or if like and p- being the little guy growing up you know i could i could understand that with like maybe not meeting the expectations that i held upon myself Mm -hmm. and then i'm like oh i'm a bitch for not being able to do this or do that when it's like if you just confront your weaknesses rather than like dwell on them that's a lot a a healthier way to do it i liked that that was good with your dad that was a good point Mm -hmm. yeah growing up man definitely i had to evolve the emotional maturity Mm -hmm. for sure and it's still something i'm working on you know well even as a kid when we're young i feel like so when it's asked what was your perspective on mental health growing up i didn't even think about mental health no we didn't really 
you don't talk about that in school. Your parent, like I, my parents loved me and they always were asking how I am, how I'm doing. They were make, always making sure I was good, but we didn't sit down and talk about, Hey, are we making sure our mental health is okay? Which I think should be implemented, right? Shouldn't we kind of, I hear Sean, uh, Sean says it to princess sometimes that I really like, she'll be freaking out and crying and stuff. And he'll say simple things to her. Use your words. Tell me how you feel. You know what I mean? Like if we could just simple, like make it simple about mental health mm-hmm. and getting the message to the kids when they're young, because you can't really fully, how do we fully understand even mental health at a young age? Because mental health, I feel like gets interrupted by adult, even, well, you know, everyone, you can, anyone could die in your life at any age, but life gets a little harder as we grow up with, with real life problems, tap money, bills, taxes, all that kind of bullshit. And then losing loved ones. Uh, losing girlfriends, boyfriends, things that don't happen when you're a kid, right? So it's like, as a kid, I never really was taught about mental health, right? And now as an adult, I really try to focus on my mental health. Whenever I'm fucking getting mad, I get mad and then I'm like, fuck, why did I get mad? I could have just, I could have went this road about it. I could have went down this road and the the outcome would have been completely different. To where as a kid, you don't think about that shit. You just kind of go. So I think that's my, my, my little bit of difference of perspective on mental health is actually facing it and confronting it and like knowing about it on a daily basis mm-hmm. with your actions, with anything. Because I don't know, I feel like as a kid, you're just kind of like, life's great, life's perfect. There's it, a lot too that comes with just allowing yourself to think differently about circumstances. Like when you're at your lowest and you're thinking like, man, I'm responsible for being here. This is my fault. Like use that as inspiration for like thinking, Oh man, you know what? Six months, a year from now, when I'm actually doing a lot better than here, I can say that same thing. Like I'm the reason I'm here. I'm responsible for this. Like that's so what's beautiful about the human experience in life is like, we're the, we have it in our hands to a degree, even like you got to get rid of that hopelessness that you might feel with all the news, especially all the news articles I was spitting today, you know, right. that's, there's a lot of dark news out there, but you can't let that shackle you. You have to, control your own destiny and put it in your hands. And that's something that I'm still trying to work on too. So I'm not perfect by any means. And I'm also trying to practice what I preach. So I'm going to work on that. Right. We've kind of answered these next two questions I've already had written down. The f- next one was, did you have conversations about mental health growing up? I answered that. But did you with your parents? I would say I had a, f- a couple, maybe more with my mom, with like when I was on Accutane, because mm-hmm. that was the medication I would take. And Jobins, if you don't know what Accutane is, it dries up your pores so that the oils, because I had so much oils and my acne was becoming such a problem that it was helping with that. But you had to get blood tests like every uh, month, I believe. And Damn. Th- because they had to check that it, the medicine wasn't messing with my, like, uh, I guess everything I was... Your mental balance. Yeah. So, chemical balance mm-hmm. and shit. But... Damn. It also is linked heavily. Like a lot of uh, well, one of the major side effects could be depression. depression. Yeah. So they would always ask me if I was experiencing depression when I was on Accutane, like my doctor that was giving it to me, my dermatologist. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, my mom too was that would always ask like how I was doing. Cause I was like 17 at the time mm-hmm. on Accutane and it really wasn't, uh, I felt like I wasn't depressed, but maybe I was disguising that with all the drinking I would do. Mm-hmm. with my buddies in high school because that was another wake-up call because they were like you shouldn't be drinking because like it's really because like i get the blood test so they're an see, irishman they could see that it's bad for you even more when you're on accutane they're like man so like, I had we know you got accutane. irish in your blood but you got to back off yeah and that's i had a real conversation with my mom then too about laying off alcohol too fuck and I was in high school. I probably need the same thing done with my blood with weed. They're probably like, dude, you got too much in there. Mm, I mean, dude, they're totally different things. They are, but it's got to be doing something wrong to me. Yeah, well, yeah, there's probably adverse side effects. I can still hold my breath so long, ready? <gasps> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've only had a few conversations, a very handful of sparse, not a lot of Yeah, right, again, like when you're a kid, I just, I feel like my mom, like she, I feel like my mom just knew I was happy. I don't know. Do you think parenting has to evolve with just times evolving as well? Yeah. Oh, because yeah. Because it's like these are conversations that people maybe didn't feel were necessary back then. Like now we have to have conversations about identifying pronouns and shit like that. That's another thing that I love about Sean that most people don't do when they're teaching their kids is like, oh, I hate when parents are like, oh, don't cuss around my kid. 
you know, because mm-hmm. then they'll start cussing. Well, it's like Sean's approach is, well, I'll teach her what that means and why we don't say it. And she won't. And, and it's like, damn, that just that little thing right there. If it was all about that kind of shit, how much better things would be. Hey, man, it's probably still going to cause the kid to cuss, but you can't stop it. You can't. You can't. You can't. So it's a better approach. I know, sure. but those parents that get hung up on a kid slipping a cuss word out and then get all bent out of shape, mm-hmm. you know, that causes shit right there. There's your fucking psychological issues from day one. Because you said shit and you got beat. Yeah. You know? What's your other... Is there another <laughs> question in there? Oh, yeah. Why is mental health important to you personally? Oh, dude. I need I need good mental health every day just to be ready for work and be performing at my best in all areas. Exactly. Mental health personally is important to me just so that I don't... You know, being depressed makes you tired. Uh, drains your energy of everything, your your creativity, your thoughts, your caring of things. And whenever my mental health is up, I just notice so much more energy. I'm happier. I want to be more helpful. I want to do more. I want to get things done. So, and, when, and I guess we're going to get to this uh, next question, but what habits do you have to take care of your mental health? Jeez. Man, that's a great question. I mean, I guess jujitsu definitely helps with that. Mm -hmm. But that's like, man, directly to do it. Maybe even like Sean does meditation and stuff too. But I I don't have myself as far as my own practices. I need some. You need some. I don't. I don't really do anything to combat my mental health. Maybe busting a nut. Yeah, I was gonna say, but like you know, if you don't have a girlfriend, like you don't want to. You got Jill. I had mental health before I had mental health practice, I guess, before even uh, my girlfriend, you know, to where right. I was in a positive mindset reading. Yeah. But reading, sometimes you jerk one off, you squeeze, you know, you're a little upset, you're a little tense, you're a little frustrated. You go squeak one out and you feel relieved. You feel better. So I bet nothing's one of them for you. But you do like to read when you too. bust like that. You have to have a positive mindset about yourself too, you know. Yeah, you like bust and like, you're hey, feeling sad about busting. You're no, like, no. God, that was gross. Yeah, and instead of thinking that way, think I'm alpha. Like, one day a woman's gonna be lucky to get this buzz. I kind of look That's at jerking kind of himself. It... Like you know, LeBron spends millions, right, mm-hmm. on himself. I feel like that. Like this is worth millions. You know, <laughs> we're keeping the body healthy. We're keeping flow going. Keeping everything good. Mm-hmm. Keeping young. <laughs> yeah. Right now with me, Jobins, uh, what habits do you have to take care of your mental health? Some of them are wrong to do. And that Sean and Tim are trying to just get me at so much at. And, you know, I use smoking weed as something to help with my depression, which really isn't what it's supposed to be. And I know that. And I'm working on it. It's something that I want to – I enjoy smoking weed. You know, yeah, that's no, my problem. That. That's my problem is I just really enjoy smoking marijuana. But that's an unhealthy way of handling – uh, your mental health. Going to the gym with David's a good one. Yeah, I big time with me. I do notice a huge difference, guys. Whenever uh, I have anxiety or I'm upset about something, I've been going on walks. I go on two 20 minute walks. I work out with David. I'm eating right. Eating right is something I think is also a mental health thing for me because I'm a big boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever I'm working out, I'm doing these exercises and I'm staying in shape. That makes me feel like I ha- I need to be eating healthy. Because if I'm not eating healthy, these things that I'm doing are not worth it and it's not going to work. So, and then I noticed like we had, we I, you know, you're allowed to have your one meal. But I don't even really like having my one meal every once in a while. Just because I know I'm sitting there thinking, God, I know much harder I'm going to have to work. I don't want to backtrack. Mm-hmm. We had some pizza the other night. And I did good with my mouth that I ate. We got a smaller amount. Didn't overeat. Didn't mm-hmm. fucking eat till I was full. Made sure that I stayed light, tried to stay light with it, but we had it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then after eating, I'm like, damn, that pizza, it just wasn't worth it. It's not worth it. So a, a good practice for me is eating right. Eating right may, definitely helps my mental health. Working out helps my mental health. And those are things that would work for everyone, including myself. Yeah. You're a good example of using those proteins, man. I also, Jobins, as you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So uh, I tell the people that I love and my friends – I get personal with them and I don't care. Like I'm an open book to them. Mm. Um, I'll cry in front of you. I'll tell you dark shit, how I feel. Um, my outlooks on things that are, have happened and why I don't hold back, you know? And that is a mental thing for me. 
because if I didn't have anyone to talk to, I'd probably freak out. And I'm not, and I'm, you know, I know there's Jobins that might not have anyone to talk to. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, something that like in those moments where I feel like I don't have anyone to talk to, writing it down in a journal or in your notes on your phone. I, sometimes I, I write it, I'll write it all out and then I delete it and I actually feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gone. I wrote it all out. I wrote how I fell, felt. And by the time that I'm done writing it out, you feel good. And then I delete it because I don't want to see it again. I don't want to reread it. I vented. It's gone, you know? So if you don't have anyone to talk to, maybe try that a little bit. Di uh, do a little, a little diary, maybe writing some shit. Throwing it. Some, I do know like people, like they put those messages in like a knife. This is for people who cut themselves, this is dark. Oh. And they write and they put a night and they put it in the jar and they dump it in the ocean. It's a way to like start new and start fresh. Mm -hmm. Just a way, a way to vent it out. So I think uh, for me, talking is definitely a huge thing for mental health. Dude, I, I think that's awesome. I think just awareness of mental health. Yeah. And like the more, con there's never too many conversations we can have about mental health. Yep. You know, and like, you're not a bitch if you want to talk about your feelings. Like it's encouraged. Not at all. It's encouraged. You know? And you're gonna inspire. And the people that you do talk to about, they're gonna relate to you mm -hmm. more. They're gonna, I don't know, just build something. Shout more. out to all the athletes too who have been talking about mental health yep. all the time, dude. It's just something that's getting brought up more in sports and in society. So that just talking and being aware and like being open, it's so good. Love it. What is the biggest challenge you've overcome in your mental health? Hmm. I'll do mine while you think. My biggest challenge I've had to overcome in my mental health is depression and uh, worrying. So I'm an overthinker. So I overthink and I worry about things that I can't necessarily control. And then that leads me down to thinking things, overthinking, thinking that they're this way when they're potentially not. And then I get myself upset and depressed from it and I'm sitting there dwelling on it when really if I just had a different thought on it, it'd be completely different, mm -hmm. you know? So I think my biggest challenge to overcome in my mental health is probably that. I like that. I, like, I think mine personally would be when I get a complacency, like when I get to a point to where I feel like uh, there's no more improvements that could be made that would be necessary. When mm -hmm. it's like, Brendan, if you just got into your mind and was just like got rid of that laziness that shackles you too and got rid of just feeling comfortable with where you're at now, you could be even better. That's my biggest thing that I need to work on. I, I feel like personally, I'm not a professional psychiatrist, so I can't like diagnose that, but that's what I would say I got. Yeah. Do. Sometimes you'd be like Kel from Good Burger. <laughs> <From Good Burger. laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Good Burger. <laughs> Welcome to Good Burger. <laughs> He's the, she, that's not the theme song we need to be here singing right now. We're all dudes. We're yeah. all dudes. He's a dude. <laughs> She's a dude. It's like, oh, my God. Good Burger. You know, my eyebrows are up a little bit with Good Burger because you got that song. And then they even the, – the dilemma in Good Burger was robots replacing humans. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of things going on in Good Burger too. Underlining things in Good Burger too. If we really want to get yeah. conspiracy. But, yeah, no, I like that. All right, last question for mental health, Jovens. What are your favorite mental health resources? I guess this is kind of like uh, habits, but not necessarily a habit, but what like resources so so like, like your friends and family for one. Yeah, books, podcasts, one. people, movies. Yeah, books for sure. I love a I, when I need to get a new book. Honestly, soon I'm gonna. Uh, I would look say up. movies, for me. My whole life, movies have uh, they help you escape reality, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. And then there's also the life lessons in movies that a lot of people like Sugar Shane Tim. Some people, until I unless I explain it properly to them, <laughs> I feel like books, movies, the same thing. You read a lot of books and you're considered smart. I think you watch a lot of movies. You should be considered smart too because there's a lot to learn in just one movie. You can learn a lot of life lessons in just one single movie. Mm -hmm. So. I would say movies for me. Anything that you can be passionate about. And you know, music. Any hobby. Music. Oh, my God. If we didn't have music, Jobins, if I couldn't sing or hear music, that's another big resource huge for one. me. Huge one. Music's huge. a huge one. Music is life. Music That's music saves the world, and we need a song still. Yeah. The music, arts, the arts, man. Yeah. Film, music, 
paintings, man, you name it. So Jobins, just remember, you're not alone this holiday season. We're here with you. We hope you maybe got some tips and tricks on how to battle those moments when you're stuck in between these years. Because you're not alone, baby, and we love you. We'll see you next week, Jobins. Episode 141. Brendan? Episode 141. We love you, Jobins. Always an honor and pleasure, brother. brother. Love you. Always. Deuces.